So, I was inspired to write Ruby Finds a Worry because we all have worries, and the simple truth is that talking about your concerns helps you to deal with them. To be honest, it's a message that I need to take note of myself sometimes. The other day I had been bottling some concerns up for far too long, and it wasn't until I spoke about it that I even realised I'd been feeling low. So yeah, you could say I wrote Ruby Finds a Worry to remind myself to be open about how I'm feeling. The first books that I fell in love with were the Tim and the Hidden People series. Now, this was a reading scheme in the UK, and the magic and excitement within the stories really resonated with me. I felt like I was literally transported into the stories. And the worlds that the author, Sheila K. McCullough, conjured up in my mind were carried through into my everyday life as I walked around the countryside where I lived. So these books had two long-lasting influences on my writing. Firstly, the desire to make a world seem real and inhabitable. And secondly, the interweaving of magic and reality, where both components are equally important to the storytelling. I first realised that I wanted to make picture books back in the early 2000s. At the time, I worked at an advertising agency but spent a lot of my free time doodling and coming up with ideas for picture books. But these are not lost hidden gems. They were all incredibly complicated, with multiple subplots and far too many unnecessary twists. I, I had no idea of what I was trying to do, and a lot of these ideas would have been terrifying to most four-year-olds. But I was in my mid-twenties at the time and convinced of my own infallible genius. In short, they were not good picture books. Uh, I spent the next few years chipping away at ideas that gradually became more and more like actual picture books. Thankfully, I feel like I actually understand the medium now, but it certainly didn't come quickly or easily to me. I'm fascinated by all forms of storytelling, and there are loads of avenues I've not yet explored. Although when I'm not making picture books, I also write books for older readers, I write songs, I create electronic music productions, make music videos, short animations, and all sorts of things. My personal feeling is that all creative endeavour is storytelling, even if it's a singular piece like a painting. The way in which you're led into a painting will have been considered so you notice certain elements before others, creating a narrative journey. 